If you lived in the Southwest United States in the mid 2000s and you listened to or were a part of the heavy music scene at the time, there's a good chance you were a fan of or have heard of the metalcore band Greeley Estates. How did a relatively obscure band from Phoenix, Arizona, who had never played instruments before, go from playing small clubs in Tempe to the main stage of Warp Tour in just a few years? What separated Greeley Estates from the thousands of other bands looking to get discovered in the MySpace era of music? And finally, what led to the death of Greeley Estates? Hey guys, I'm Matt from A Change of Scene. Welcome to my channel. Thank you so much for coming here with me. I love making videos for you about my passion, which is alternative and scene music. Please consider subscribing to see more videos like this in the future. Also, check out my Review in Two series, where I review your favorite bands and artists in two minutes. Today I'm going to be taking a look at the rise and fall of one of metal's most unlikely heroes of the decade, Greeley Estates. How did they rise to scene prominence? What set them apart from other bands at the time? And why did they break up? Greeley Estates was formed in 2002 by Ryan Zimmerman, Brandon Hackinson, Dallas Smith, Jared Wallace, and Mike Coburn. The band got their name from a road sign in Greeley, Colorado that Ryan and Brandon saw while driving from Illinois to Arizona on their way to attend college. The two thought it would make a funny band name. Once in Phoenix, Ryan's roommate at the time, Dallas Smith, started learning how to play guitar. It wasn't long before Ryan took his inspiration from bands like Lucky Boy's Confusion and MXPX and started writing lyrics for what Dallas was playing. The two became obsessed with writing and practicing. Six months later, after being joined by Brandon, Jared, and Mike, Greeley Estates played their first show at the Big Fish Pub in Tempe, Arizona. The guys played to a sold out show, consisting of mostly the band's friends from school, giving them the boost they needed to consider making this a worthwhile pursuit. Drawing on influences from other bands at the time, like Finch, The Starting Line, and Norma Jean, as well as Tucson's very own The Bled, Greeley continued practicing their craft. Along with their legendary energy at local performances, the band quickly picked up a dedicated following in the Valley of the Sun. After cycling through a few drummers, Brian Champ soon became the main percussion for Greeley Estates. After Jared Wallace left the group, Josh Applebach took over on bass. In the summer of 2004, Greeley Estates released their debut album, Outside of This. Produced by Corey Spots, who would later go on to produce records for fellow Arizona outfits, Bless the Fall, and Job for a Cowboy. Although a bit dated to today's standards of production, Outside of This still holds up as a post-hardcore staple and features tracks such as Tear My World Apart, Through Waiting, and the title track, all of which became stage classics that the band toured on locally and nationally, creating a name for themselves outside of their Phoenix hometown. In 2005, Greeley Estates signed a label, Record Collection, and released their follow-up EP, Caveat M Tour. Websites like MySpace, Pure Volume, and Smart Punk were just starting to get big, and bands were beginning to get discovered online. The single Y'all with the Vampire Squad took the internet by storm. Greeley Estates had become one of Pure Volume's top 10 unsigned artists with over 1 million plays. They played every date of the Vans Warp Tour in 2005 and co headlined the MySpace Fall Tour that same year with My American Heart and a change of pace. Greeley Estates stood out from a sea of other unsigned artists with an unrivaled energy fueled by sugar-free Red Bull. Where they lacked in technical playing ability, they made up for in stage presence and with undeniably catchy songs. Greeley was also ahead of the curve when it came to marketing and the fan experience, which led to the type of cult-like following that some bands can only dream of. They were one of the first bands to capitalize on visual media. In May of 2005, the band put out a DVD the Death of Greeley Estates, not to be confused with the album of the same name which came later. The band played on the Taste of Chaos tour and even got regular play on the local 103.9 alternative rock radio station. Around this time, Pete Wentz from Fall Out Boy reached out to the band about management and promotion, pushing Greeley to take on a more pop punk or emo sound, akin to Story of the Year, who was still riding high off of that Until the Day I Die single. Ultimately, Greeley decided to blaze their own trail, and the band released their second album, Far From the Lies, in 2006. While not a major departure from their already known sound, the album boasted a much bigger budget and improved production quality. Tracks like The End of All We Know and Nothing Good Happens After Dark would go on to influence the band's more aggressive sound on future albums. Greeley continued touring, even playing 20 main stage spots on Warp Tour. In 2007, the band shakeups really began for Greeley Estates. Bassist Josh Applebach announced that he would leave the band. He was replaced by Bradley Murray as touring bassist, and then eventually Joshua Fergie Ferguson. In the summer of 2007, guitarist Dallas Smith decided to leave the band in order to start a family. He announced that his last show would be June 20th, 
2007 at the Clubhouse in Tempe. In September of that year, Greeley Estate started recording their new album, returning to producer Corey Spots. Replacing Dallas on guitar would be Alex Torres, previously with Eyes Set to Kill. During recording, bassist Joshua Ferguson left the band and returned to Canada. He would later be replaced by Tyler Telly Smith from the San Diego band in Fear and Faith. Go West, Young Man, Let the Evil Go East was released on May 6, 2008. Coming full circle, the title of the album is attributed to newspaper editor Horace Greeley in reference to America's expansion westward and the concept of manifest destiny, a fitting approach for a band who was also expanding their sound at the time. The album is the first by Greeley Estates without their previous post-hardcore sound. It pursues a much heavier metalcore style. While most bands at the time got softer as their discography grew, Greeley Estates got the most joy out of performing their heavier songs on stage and wanted to write a record reflecting that. Following the album's release, Greeley joined Warped Tour yet again in the summer of 2008. Later that same year, Telly left the band to join up with another Arizona upstart, The Word Alive, which had just let go of Craig Mabbitt, who was double dipping with them and escape the fate. Stepping in on bass would be Kyle Kolsch. Greeley spent the remainder of 2008 and into 2009 touring with bands such as August Burns Red, Motionless and White, Alisana, Sky Eats Airplane, and A Static Lullaby. Drummer Brian Champ left the band and was replaced by Chris Julian. In November of 2009, the band released the track Jealousy Breeds Killing Sprees, featuring Craig Mabbitt, and the track Seven Hours. Both songs were from their upcoming album, No Rain, No Rainbow. The album was released in January of 2010. Once again, the band worked with producer Corey Spott and continued to explore their metal influences. The album was Greeley's heaviest release, with many songs having fast tempos and blast beats some songs completely absent of clean vocals. The album was met with some consternation from longtime fans, who felt that the band had retreated too far from their original sound. Regardless, the album created an immense amount of buzz around Greeley Estates once again. Unfortunately, the day No Rain dropped, Ryan's mother passed away from cancer. He was unable to make the start of their tour the next day, and frontman Matty Mullins from Memphis May Fire filled in until Ryan was able to return. According to Ryan, he spent most of that tour drinking heavily and trying to cope with the loss of his mother. He also says life was beginning to take on a new perspective for him. On June 12, 2010, guitarist Alex Torres, who had replaced Dallas Smith back in 2007, announced his departure from the band via MySpace, mentioning, no, there is no bad blood and everyone is on good terms. Greeley has been my family since 2007 and that will not change. Greeley Estates then toured the US and a number of other countries, headlining shows with bands such as Vana, Tides of Man, A Bullet for Pretty Boy, and The Crimson Armada. The band began work on their fifth studio album in 2010. When asked of the band's new record, lead singer Ryan Zimmerman said, we're thinking of combining the last two records, Go West and No Rain, to kind of bring back some singing and have some melody, but still have the heavy. The name of the album was revealed to be The Death of Greeley Estates, and once again was produced by Corey Spots. On June 1st, 2011, the first single to the new album was released on the band's Facebook, titled The Last Dance. The full album was released August 9th, 2011. The album was generally well received by fans, reaching number two on Billboard's Heat Seeker chart. For Greeley's next project, the guys set out to release two separate EPs with seven songs each. For the first time, the band would be releasing both albums independently with no label. In October of 2012, they dropped the single Lot Lizards from the EP Narrow Road. In November, another new song from the EP was released, Head Underwater, which was the first official single. It also came with an accompanied music video. The Narrow Road came out on November 20th, 2012. The first song to appear from Devil Son, the second EP, was Turn the Night Away, which released on April 2nd, 2013. Devil Son was released a week later on April 9th. The twin EPs once again captured that perfect mix of metal and melody that the band had spent years searching for. It finally felt like Greeley was settling into their sound. On September 14th, 2015, after a lengthy break away from writing and performing, Greeley Estates posted working on new music to their Facebook page. Almost two years later, the band released their final EP, Calling All the Hopeless, on June 27th, 2017. Lyrics on the new album were inspired by Ryan's work as a therapist and his experiences working with and around substance abuse. Chad Moses from To Write Love on Her Arms is featured on the song Liminal Space. The album reached number one on the iTunes metal chart. In 2016, guitarist David Ludlow and bassist Kyle Kolsch both joined new metal band Dead in Tempe, Arizona. Ryan Zimmerman and Brandon Hackinson both settled down to start families. Ryan went back to school to complete his master's degree. 
He now works as a therapist working with young adults, happy to be off the road and spending time with his growing family. On December 21st, 2018, the band played their final show at Club Red in Mesa, Arizona with the original lineup from 2008. 16 years later, what had started out as a joke led to some of the most memorable performances and songs in metalcore history. Greeley Estates changed the lives of not only the band members themselves, but also millions of kids and young adults around the world. Nothing lasts forever, but the memories will live through the death of Greeley Estates.